I'm Elizabeth at Literary Princess and today I am doing my end of the year um, reading stats for 2022. So I did a kind of a mid-year on this and I really enjoyed doing it because I like graphs and stuff. It's fine. It's fine. I'm a nerd. It's fine. But I wanted to do an update on it for the end of the year. So I will be showing you all my little graphs. Yes, I have a spreadsheet. Leave me alone. <laughs> and getting into all of the specifics, all of genres, how many books per month did I read? How many pages did I read? Um, rereads versus new reads, arcs versus non-arcs, publication year, all that fun stuff along with some things from the Goodreads um, end of the year wrap up. First, just the kind of basics. And again, I'm sorry for like looking down a lot, but I need to look at the computer to tell you what things are. <laughs> so I read a total of 98 books. My goal had been 50, so I almost doubled it. I really would have liked to have gotten those those last two, but I just, I couldn't. It's not the end of the world, it's fine. So for those 98 books, it came to a total of 32,892 pages. I spent an average of 7.2 days per book. Uh, and honestly, that average is probably super skewed because there were a lot of books that I finished in one day. And then there's more, there's books that took me 59 days or 61 days. Yeah, but you know, 7.2 days on average per book. The average page count came to 335.6, which we'll get a bit more of a breakdown on that, but that completely makes sense. Average rating was 3.8 stars. Last year I had an average rating of 3.6 stars, so we are slightly up. I am also up in the number of books and the number of pages that I read. Um, in 2021 I only read 73 books, which came to 2600, 600, or excuse me, oh yeah, 20, 26,624 pages and the average book length was 364. So we are actually down on the average page count, which is interesting. And then the average pages for, per day was, was 89.9, .9, so 90, <laughs> 90 pages per day. So let's get into some of the more specifics. We will go with books per month first. So I didn't really have a month where like a bad reading month, like one that was really slumpy. The first few months, like from January to May, I was reading either six or seven books per month. Over the summer, I started to become more. I read 10 in June, eight in July, and then 15 in August. Wow. So I was participating in a 1000 pages readathon in August um, that was hosted over on Tumblr by Books and Cookies. She's lovely. Her name is Mary. I adore her. Anyway, um, and this was lasting from the 13th to the 21st. And I mean, I was powering through. I'm looking at these like, damn girl. By um, day five, I had reached 1,274 pages and was fully expecting to continue on. Um, but then my brother passed away and I stopped participating in the readathon. I did continue reading, but it was definitely at a slower rate, but it didn't matter. I, I still came up to 15 books that month. And I did not, I did not get back to that level. I did read 10 books in September. And then after that, I dropped off a bit, seven books in October. Although to be fair, some of those were very long Victorian books. So, you know, for Victober. And then six books in November. November is the month that felt slumpy for me, which is interesting because it's the same amount of books I was reading in January and February, but I was just very burnt out from reading for my exams 
And then December bumped up a bit to nine books because I was doing a bunch of rereads that were short and I was much happier then. So books per month, the least I read was six. Most I read was 15. Like that's pretty good as opposed to, I mean, I think, I think in 2021, there was a few months where I read like two books. <laughs> So <laughs> next up is genres and there are two very clear winners in this. If this were a contest, there are two very clear winners. I read 41 classics, <laughs> which is 41.8% of my reading. <laughs> and then the next highest was nonfiction with 33. So, and nothing even came close to that. Um, the next highest genre is contemporary at 11. <laughs> Thank you, exams. I read 41 classics because of exams. Genres that I read the least from were sci-fi and romance, which completely makes sense because I generally don't like those genres. Fantasy, I only read eight, which was kind of surprising because I like fantasy, but when you're spending all of your time reading classics and feminist theory, there's not a lot of time for fantasy. I'm thinking that it might be a little more evened out for 2023, but then I'm gonna be writing my dissertation, so who knows? <laughs> Break down the page counts a little bit more. I had an equal number of books between 200 and 300 pages and between 300 and 400 pages, 25 each. And you know, that's a fairly standard length for a book. Between 200 and 400 pages, like that's a good length. Uh, there were 13 books between 400 and 500 pages, and then 12 between 100 and 200 pages. I actually have two books in the highest amount of pages that I read, which was 800 to 900. There are two books in there. One is Daniel Deronda by George Eliot. The other is The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. For my rating distribution, this was pretty, actually pretty good. So the most I had were 41 four-star reads, which completely makes sense. I don't generally read things I'm not gonna like, and I think I'm pretty good about knowing what I am going to like. So 41 four stars, 13 four and a half stars, and then 12 five stars. That's pretty good. There were 14 three stars, which means that I was just like, this is okay. So for me, five star is I loved it. Four star is it was good. Three is it was okay. Like I liked parts of it, but maybe didn't like some parts. Two stars is I didn't like it, but it has some merit. One star is this was trash. <laughs> and then of course I used the half stars for kind of the in-betweens. So 14 three stars, five two and a half stars, um, seven two stars, which is kind of a bummer. That's more than I would generally like, but then only one one star book. And if you've been watching for a while, you all know what that is. It was Disorientation by Elaine Shechu. I'm not doing a worst books video this year, but that was my worst book, Disorientation. The only one star read. For the sources of the books. So I bought 50% of the books that I read this year. <laughs> to be fair, I, I bought a lot of these for my exams. <laughs> To be fair, the next biggest category was the University Library with 15.3%. A lot of my feminist theory books were from there. The second biggest category was the Public Library with 12.2%. Um, NetGalley with 9.2%, and we'll talk about ARCs in a bit as well. 7.1% um, that I just call free because like they weren't gifts but I got them somewhere and did not pay money for them. And then 6.1% were gifts. And I should probably, for 2023, hope to get that a little bit higher because I have a lot of books that were gifts that I've not read yet. So to talk about the ARCs, I read nine ARCs from NetGalley this year, and then 89 books were not ARCs. Format, 73.5% um, were print. 
I prefer print books. I just, I like having it. I don't know. I do read on my Kindle and on audiobook, but mostly I like print books. I'm sure you can tell. 23.5% um, were ebooks, and then 3.1% were audiobooks. And I think that's only, that should only be three books that I read on audio. For rereads, 86 books were new to me, and then 12 were rereads. And honestly, the first half of the year, I did not reread anything. I don't think I had reread anything until July, maybe the end of June. And then December is where I was like really rereading things because I was, t there's some books that I'm teaching that I needed to reread. But I'm pretty pleased that most of the books were new to me. I do love rereading, but I have a lot of books that are new to me that I should read. Publication dates. As you can see by my chart here, I put out each decade of the 19th century because I was really interested to see where the majority of my reading would fall because of my exams, because most of what I'm reading is from the 19th century. So let's talk about that first, and then we'll talk about like the modern books. So I read for the 19th century the most from the 1890s, which was kind of surprising to me. I also read nothing from the 1830s. I'm like, did anything get written in the 30s? No? Okay. Yeah, there were eight books from the 1890s. Um, and I read a lot of new women fiction, so that does make sense. Next was the 1860s with six books. And then the 1850s and 1880s are tied with four books each. And then five books from the 1910s. So that was a lot of the romantic literature that I read. The years with the most books were actually the 1990s with 13 books. To be fair, that included the poetry collections of John Keats, William Wordsworth, and Samuel Taylor Coleridge and Percy Shelley because those editions came out in the 90s and I didn't put them on their original with their original publication date because a lot of those were published at various different times. So I was just like, okay, 90s. So those are in there probably kind of skewing things. But I also read a lot of literary criticism from the 90s uh, focused on new women novels. The 2010s and the 1980s tied with 11 books each. So those so the 1980s is probably mostly feminist theory. <laughs> and then the 2010s I'm sure is just a lot of novels. I read five books published in 2020 one book published in 2021. I don't know how that happened. I guess I read all my 2021 releases in 2021. And then I read 10 books that were published in 2022. Next year, I will not be like divvying how each decade of the 19th century, I'm just gonna have 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. And then I'm gonna be kind of grouping um, the early half of the of the 20th century together and then the later half. But I did want to see this because it's interesting. So Mrs. Warren's Profession by George Bernard Shaw was my shortest book of the year. This was a play from the 19th century. It was a reread too, one of those few rereads. Um, it was 46 pages in my Norton anthology. Quite short. And then the longest. <laughs> The longest was Daniel Deronda at 850 pages. Longest book of the year. I actually loved it too. I really enjoyed Daniel Deronda. But yeah, it's a chunkster. And then for the most popular and least popular ones on Goodreads, the most popular book that I read was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which was a reread. And that has been shelved by 2,422,680 other people on Goodreads. The least popular book that I read was George Eliot and the Conventions of Popular Women's Fiction by Susan Rowland Tush, and only one other person has shelved that. Shocking, my really specific niche academia interests are only shared by one other person. The highest rated on Goodreads was Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman, Alice Osman, I still don't know. 
if it had no E, I would say Osman, but it has an E. Somebody tell me in the comments. I have asked this multiple times. No one else seems to know. Anyway, Heartstopper Volume 4 was the highest rated on Goodreads that I read with an average of 4.64 stars. And that was a five star from me. So, understandably so. Those are my 2022 reading stats. Let me know down in the comments below. How many books did you read in 2022? What are some of your stats? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.